Back in 2019, Jeff shared with me, and this is Jeff, by the way, um, some of the images he was taking with uh, an iPhone and processing through an app in the iPhone by the Hipstamatic company, and I use Hipstamatic a lot, so that's how I learned about what he was doing, and th that app was called Tintype, I believe. And uh, as Jeff always does, he would always takes something and makes something better with it, and this is how he makes his cactus prints, which he's now doing a whole series of, and uh, it's pretty damn cool. So why don't you run through the process now of what you do, how you shoot it, and... Okay. So the backstory is that on February 22nd, which is my birthday, my wife and I decided we want to go someplace warm. I'm from Chicago. So we looked at Tucson, Arizona, and St. Augustine, Florida. The average daily temperature of February 22nd in Tucson was 60, 67 degrees, and in St. Augustine, 64 degrees. So, hey, we'll go to Tucson. It <laughs> snowed. <laughs> so basically, I'm down there in the um, cactus center of the world, and it ended up snowing on the cactus, which actually ended up being pretty cool. This is the first shot that I did of a saguaro uh, uh, cactus, and this is literally from the car as I was leaving the Tucson airport. The light on this was just gorgeous. But what ended up happening is this Tintype app was alluring it has an interesting effect. And this is a screenshot of the tintype in the actual app. You have control over the plate, which is the uh, kind of the rough edge texture, and the blur, uh, because basically in old tintypes, there were sharp areas and soft areas. You could also adjust the color. So this is what it looked like as a straight tintype. And then here, being able to adjust the color to get this kind of effect, which was cool. Yeah. But it was a rabbit hole that I went down because <laughs> I did not like the nature of the texture. Uh, I mean, I wanted to adjust it and fine tune it. And working with the app was uh, limiting. So then what I ended up doing is bringing it into Photoshop. So here is the image. I ended up processing it multiple times to get different color tonalities and uh, blending where the tonality would be using a layer mask. Then what I did is I started adding texture, texture and color. And the way you could do that, uh, and I, that was the other thing that I did, is I went out and found an unimaginable amount of textures out there, and I bought them. Um, I've also shot some textures. It's just interesting to go look for textures. Uh, but in this case, it was a metallic with scratches, which worked well for the, uh, uh, then added in a different texture. Coming back in and adding an additional layer of noise coming back in and allowing some adjustments of the uh, edges. And then this is what the final image ended up looking like. And you can see oh, in the detail. Yeah, the detail and the textures. Yep. So the interesting thing is you get a, the resolution for printing. This would be 14 by 18 at 216 pixels per inch. And in this case, I would set the sharpening to 360. Why 360? Well, because that's the native resolution. I'm oh. up sampling to 360. 360. Now the other thing that I can do, and which I have done, is come up under Photo Enhance. And this is a new thing. It's taking raw images or uh, TIFF and PSDs. Very popular now. And being able to up sample and it's basically doing, this is going to take seven minutes because it's a big file. But you can do super resolution is what yeah. they call it as a tool. Yeah. Now the other thing is if push comes to shove, if you've got low resolution originals, you can actually go to um, uh, Topaz's Gigapixel. And i got to tell you, that actually so works, works quite well quite nice. in a lot of, if you have a good original, you can upsample uh, an enormous amount. But let me just... 
Let me just show you um, the, the textures that I went out and found. I particularly like the flypaper. Actually, one of the things as a photographer you should be aware of, and while you're purchasing some of these, um, skies and textures, we, you know, I now make my own libraries. If I see something interesting um, on a, like a sidewalk or I see a, a really pretty sky with nice clouds, you know, I photograph those and make my own file sets so that I can use them and they're my files being overlaid and used if I do sky replacements or adding textures and backgrounds. Of course, you can purchase a ton of them from a, a whole bunch of different places, but it's just one thing as a photographer now you should be aware of. Always be looking and, you know, look for areas of things like this that you can take. It could be, you know, rusty areas, sidewalks, pavements, sides of buildings, all sorts of crazy well, things. Well, he's a rust addict. Oh, of course he I am, goes out and finds rust. Uh, I don't have any rust that... Uh, well, I'm, I actually I'm have happy to provide rust. some for you. Okay. What you want to be able to do is adjust the, the blending um, you can do, this is what the normal looks like. You can do darken, multiply. These are all mathematical blending algorithms. Overlay, which is screening the highlights, multiplying the shadows, but I find that soft light often works the best. And it introduces a very gentle texture. Then you can vary the opacity to fine tune the amount that you want to actually have visible. This is like, you know, top secret, tell no one. Oh. <laughs> it's uh, just technique. Yeah. And I uh, appreciate you sharing that with us. That's, it, it really is pretty cool. And the, to see the prints like you see behind us here, they're, they're quite exceptional. And um, you got a whole series of them now. And you'll probably continue with the project, I would presume. Yes. And it's actually advancing because recently I was out in Monterey. California, and what I've been doing is taking the base look that I kind of developed in the cactus, the, you know, the uh, old timey, and I like the, the tin type look, the edge and the frame, but this, what I'm doing is going back in with different kinds of rough edges. This is a tree, windblown tree cypress, I think. Uh, On the west coast, yes. near Carmel, probably. Uh, and. Those birds were actually. Oh, I was going to say. No, no, I, I, I can did sell not you a bunch them. of bird pictures. <laughs> These are the birds that I. I see. Did. I've actually influenced yeah. you with some birds. Yes, I'm kind of moving away from the tin type edge into other natural edges, uh, and I've actually taken. I used to have. I still have it, uh, but I don't know how to use it. I still have um, uh, prints of the rough cut out negative carriers oh, yeah. that I've made. Filed, filed down carriers, mm -hmm. yep. I scanned the prints and I actually have my old original uh, rough cut out edges uh, that I'm, I'm starting to use. And then you'll notice here are some textures that I actually ended up shooting. Once again, you can buy borders and textures. Uh, There's some programs like uh, Topaz Studio, for example, that not only has frames, but has borders and textures in it, and you can do a combination of all these things. So they're out there, but the secret really is probably narrowing it down to something that's, that you like and using it on a more consistent basis. Um, so it, it's a lot of fun to, to do. And I think the other thing that you need to see here with Jeff is that you know, he's working on projects, and we talk a lot about projects. You know, it's one thing to snap pictures of our family and so forth, but as photographers, we sometimes have a cause, something that is important to us, or something that we get attracted to that we want to, you know, continue doing. Um, you know, I've, for, go, for going to Antarctica or Greenland could be a project, or taking a trip to Sedona or uh, to the West Coast to photograph trees could be a project, and then it becomes an ongoing project. And uh, you add to that project and take in pictures out, put new ones in, and you know, come up with a portfolio you know, that's yours. And that's what a lot of portfolios are, is you know, a combination of projects and you know, a, a technique that becomes singular and your own. I look at it as interesting rabbit holes to go down that produce good bodies of work. And that's what, you know, I started off by doing the tintype app thinking, oh, this is kind of cool, and then refining it and, and polishing it and taking it to my own depth. 
uh, which, uh, and then now adjusting and flying. And refining. Yeah. You know, it's a problem with photography, isn't it? There are so many rabbit holes we could go down, whether we buy a camera gear or making prints or working on techniques and everything. Somehow or rather, you lose a lot of sleep. And I guess there was a reason they used to call Photoshop widows, Photoshop widows. Because yeah. <laughs> you know, Photoshop was probably the first place where it was like, ooh, I can do that, I can do that, and you know, you just wouldn't leave the computer. So anyway, Jeff, this is an amazing project. I know we're gonna see more of it. Hopefully we can actually uh, do an article, a series of prints and mm -hmm. you know, show it. But uh, I admire how you started it. It's been, what, four years almost that you've been working yeah. on it? It's, it's like Jeff. You know, some people would have just stopped at the tin type stage with all the neat little things that it had. But no, Jeff is one of those kind of guys, and I would encourage all of you to just see what it takes to take it a step further. And it's amazing where it can go. Yep. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you for watching this segment. I'm sure if you have questions, you can uh, put a question on the forum and Jeff will answer it. And uh, once again, Jeff, thanks so much for coming to the Indy. We're doing this and good job, my friend.